Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Us, a show dedicated to bringing real help to real couples. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, guys? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and together we are high-performance marriage coaches. We are cutting through the bullcrap and creating a movement of happy, healthy, badass couples all over the world. Let's go! What's up, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Badass Husband Mastermind. Go to badasshusband.com to get more information, but let me tell you a little bit about it. Guys, who is in your corner? Like, literally, who is in your corner? Who's your accountability? Who's your backup? Who's your encouragement? Who is going to kick your ass when you need it? We all need ass kicking sometimes, and it does feel really good to kick other people's ass in a good way. We focus on five key areas, body, brain, beliefs, bank, and board. That covers all of who you are as a human. And guys, if you want to level up, women, if you're listening to this and you want your husband to level up, get him in this group right now. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and there's everywhere to have high accountability, high encouragement, and we set goals and we get stuff done. So go to badasshusband.com right now. Get in this group. I promise you, you will love it. It will change your life. Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Us. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, guys? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. We are both high-performance marriage coaches. And you guys, today is a treat. This happened so fast, and I could not be more stoked. We have G.S. Youngblood, author of The Masculine in Relationship, a blueprint for inspiring the trust, lust, and devotion of a strong woman. So, G.S., what's up, my man? How's it going? Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you both for having me on. I think this is going to be fun. I can yeah. tell by your energy right now. <laughs> It's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be fun. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I swear I reached out to you like probably less than five days ago. Boom, we had a quick turnaround mm-hmm. and now we're here. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited. I told my, my men's mastermind group, I was like, guys, the book we've been reading that we've been talking about for weeks and weeks, we're going to hang out with him. So they were, they were super stoked about it too. So <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty excited. But for, for those uh, of our listeners who may be new to your work, give us a little bit of background. Um, where you're from, what your story is, and how did you come to writing this such an impactful book? Yeah, I, you know, I my background is is started out as 20 years in Silicon Valley and in the high tech industry, mm. and um, I loved it for 10 years, and then over the last probably five years, I started to realize how much my interest in technology was waning. Mm. Uh, and how much my interest in interpersonal dynamics was really starting to take off. And that was kicked off by a, a divorce I went through uh, 13 years ago, I would say. And that marriage ended in a pretty big ball of flames in a, in a very painful way for me. Mm-hmm. And I was just I was just shattered at the end of that and how, you know, really the whole time and then how it landed. And I knew there had to be a better way. I was by that time, I was. Uh, withholding who I was and what I needed and really no sense of identity uh, apart from my wife at the time. Mm-hmm. And it was the pain of that, of the, of the bottom of that curve that really motivated me to um, find a better way. I knew there had to be a better way to be in relationship. And so I got exposed to uh, this world called authentic relating. And there was a big contingent of that out here in San Francisco and I learned I had emotions. Imagine that. And I, mer- I, I learned to, to self-reflect in a way I could start to see my insecurities that I tried so hard to hide from the world. And, um, and that was great. I really grew from that. But it had its limits for me. And that's when I discovered David Data, who, which is the, the entree for most of us who look at masculine feminine dynamics. Mm-hmm. And um, got into the men's work aspect of things and really that masculine feminine dynamic. And so I've studied with David and I've studied with John, one of his, his primary students over the years. And so I've been doing that work for, you know, almost 10 years now. Mm-hmm. And Along the way, I just um, I observed principles of relating and and patterns that I that I saw, and it's I, I kind of like to do that. I had published a book, you know, like twelve years ago, kind of in the about the business world, and it was that same thing in me. I like to look for patterns and then codify them into a structure that that makes sense, and that's really what happened with with my first book here, the masculine in relationship. I just at some point I'm like, damn, I've got a lot of material here. Mm-hmm. And I think I can make this into a book. And, and that's that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And it, it just it coalesced into a modern, into a model of masculinity that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. that feels like it fits with the modern world. It's not, we all know it's not the 1950s. So it's like, what is masculinity in a modern world with mm-hmm. strong women like Melanie here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can just, I can feel it in your presence. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and I, and, you know, and I know that Seth's got to bring it, or at least I presume that okay. Seth's got to bring it in a relationship together. So yeah. mm-hmm. that's the model of masculinity that came into the three-part blueprint that we'll talk about here in, in this interview. Um, it made sense to me as to what the distillation of what a masculine core really is in the modern world. And mm-hmm. So I'll pause there uh, since I talked a lot. No, that's no, awesome. No, I, can I ask really quickly, oh, what man, did you I do? I know we were like fighting over it. What did you do in Silicon Valley? Like what type of tech stuff did you do just out of curiosity so that I, I have a thought about it? Yeah, well, I worked for uh, big companies like Intel and Broadcom mm-hmm. and small startups that you've never heard of. And I even mm-hmm. started my own company at one point that we sold. Um, and I was doing product marketing, product management, and sales, uh, and all that. And then with the company that I started, I was, you know, sort of founder work right. uh, in that case. So this was like real hardcore Silicon Valley jobs. Yeah, um, I think it's and it was great, cool, like, great for a while. Yeah, I love the to like look into the inner workings of how someone thinks and like what they're really, really like their zone of geniuses. And then when that translates to relationship stuff, I always get like super jazzed. So I didn't know that about you. So that that was just like a side thing I wanted to mm-hmm. ask. But what were you going to say? Well, it's I know you mentioned uh, the work of David Data uh, in in this book in the masculine in relationship. And just yesterday, I started again. Uh, another guy in my mastermind group said, "Hey, have you checked out the Way of the Superior Man?" I'm like, "Well, I've heard of it a thousand times. I've never." read it and on my outdoor exercise last night i picked it up like slammed an hour of it and it's like oh man this is great so i'm reading like your book and his book at the same time and it is really like that word you know you said coalescing it is coalescing into a different maybe not a different but a really uh rediscovery of like my masculine self you know because in marriage like in, in like you said in in your divorce that i mean in your marriage that ended in divorce we kind of lose sight of that mm-hmm. stuff and it's, it's funny because you were not you were talking about this earlier this morning how you sort of lost a, a sense of yourself you right. know but regaining that because you know we have kids we get married you know we've been married for 18 years it's like okay stuff gets pushed in the background because mm-hmm. other stuff is happening and then yep. now i feel like where we are now in a you know very mature 18 year long relationship it's like oh we're rediscovering new things and it's exciting it's mm-hmm. fresh it's putting us out on the edge a little bit but i always say you know all growth comes in discomfort so mm-hmm. i'm not i'm not afraid of that right. at all but i did want to mention uh, the work of data and um uh, his seminal book which i'm just loving so far as well as your book i'm like yeah man. yeah well you're talking about you know long term relationship and and trying to keep it fresh and trying to keep it alive and that's what that's what data writes about polarity like he was I mean, polarity goes way back thousands of years to Shakti and Shiva, but in terms of modern, David was the first one talking about that. And, you know, you guys been together 18 years. You start to be able to, I don't want to say master, but to somewhat, you know, flow with these dynamics of masculine and feminine, you can keep it fresh. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the guys, they didn't have any idea of that dynamic, just like I did 15 years ago when I started that work. And so that's that's the most fun when I when guys write me, they're like, this so impacted me because I had no idea. Right. She might have had an idea of all the ways that he wasn't showing up, but he didn't. Yeah. And um, it's fun to kind of shine the light on that for people yeah. that that really are suffering. I think that's one of the things that really motivates me is there's so many men out there who are suffering in their relationship and they love their woman. Mm-hmm. You know, girlfriend or wife, and they just don't know how to make it right. I had a client just three hours ago, and he's just like his wife looked at him and said, "You don't know how to make me happy." Mm-hmm. And it was it was like kind of heartbreaking to hear that, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love giving guys some tools where they can actually make a real change, and mm-hmm. really, most importantly, if there's kids involved. Mm-hmm. And if it gives them a chance to keep that family together, where the kids don't have to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. That's that feels so vital to me in, in the work that I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. One of the things right out of the gate that I want to ask sort of your, I don't know if definition is the right word for it, but like when you introduce this idea to men or anybody, what is the sort of first thing that you think people get wrong or they misunderstand about what masculine even means? Um, they think masculine means they have to be in charge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they go to some kind of fantastical vision of, you know, like Christian Grey or something, uh, you know, just being totally in charge. And 
And then they get intimidated. They're like, I don't know how the hell to do that. Right. And then I have to remind them that that's not the target. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in charge. You have to facilitate what the way I like to talk about is really facilitate directionality in the relationship in whatever form that means. And we can talk about examples, but mm -hmm. that's really what it's about. It's not about being in charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another thought too. Actually, do you have anything you want to say? Because I have like loads that I want no, to say. No, no, I'll, I'll let you go first and then I'm okay. going to rein it back to um, this. Because I know for, I am a strong woman and it was really interesting. Like as I was listening, I, I have your book on Audible, like I said, and I was drop, I dropped a friend off at the airport and was like skipping through chapters just to get a piece because I wanted to be prepared even though I wish I had read the entire thing. But initially I was like, I want to know because immediately I have this like, like uh, I bristle at the concept of like, don't you call me feminine? Don't you say I'm small? Don't, you know, like, you know, you even said it in the book. Like you basically were talking about me in the parts that I was listening to. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is embarrassing, but <laughs> it's going to be helpful. Right. So I immediately like kind of bristle at it. And then I know that women in like my women's group coaching groups would immediately bristle at it too. And like even Reva, our um, assistant was like, wait, is this toxic masculinity? And I, and I was like, no, 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 we got to be fair. We got to like give it a go. But you said one of the coolest things when in, I was in the section about, I think it was about polarity. And there was like two different ones, like polarity and the women's chapter. But you talked about women as like an oracle. And that was all I had to hear. And I was like, sold, sold. I don't care. Like he could say anything else. And I'm here for that. So will you talk about that for like a hot second? Yeah, I will. And I'll, and I'll give credit to David Data and John Wineland, who are, who are two of my teachers that talk a lot about this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, let's see, what's the easiest way to describe this? Well, quite frankly, I, I, the feminine senses more than the masculine, mm -hmm. you know, and I won't even attach a gender to it, but right. the feminine senses more than a masculine. So my woman, like, she sees things in me that I'm not even seeing yet sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I have had a history of, of like, no, I'm not feeling angry. What are you talking about? Um, and I learned the hard way and the long way. But at some point, I learned to trust her instinct, mm -hmm. at least for a little while, to mm -hmm. open to it at first and say, hmm, what might actually be true here? Because I, I just know she's, a, she's an empath. And so she can feel things and see things that I can't. So I needed to start opening to that and really consider her my oracle. And mm -hmm. doesn't mean I have, if she doesn't mean I have to believe it, I have to take it on, mm -hmm. I have to agree with it. I could choose to reject it, but to at least to pause and consider it, I think it's actually benefited me a lot. Right. And it's not, I don't do that to be a good man and a good guy right. or egalitarian, like the hell with that. Mm -hmm. I do it because she's actually right sometimes and it helps me grow. Right. Um, that's really what that's about. And yeah. I love, like, I want to read the definition of the word oracle. Um, it says a person giving wise or authoritative, decisive or opinions. Did I say that wrong? De decisive opinions. Um, oh. And it authoritative or wise expression or answer. And I really love that because I feel like, again, I felt like you were talking about exactly me when you were like, oh, when they're, when your spouse is not in their masculine, assuming again, my husband in his masculine, me and my feminine, it will, uh, when you're not in your masculine, I feel unsafe, but mm -hmm. I also am like intuiting and seeing things that I'm like, Hey, bro, like if you worked on this thing, if mm -hmm. you thought about this thing longer, it might help you. But then if you neglect that, it feels so diminishing and demeaning to me. Cause I'm like, I can see it. Like, it's not helpful. Let's work yeah. on this thing. And mm -hmm. so just the language of it being like an Oracle, like it, it feels that's the kind of femininity I could get behind because yeah. at first I was like, I can't make sense. Like, what is he wanting me to be? Like, what does feminine even mean? And I couldn't, couldn't quite make sense of that. But then when you also talked about polarity, like the concept of polarity and Shakti and Shiva or whatever, is that what it is? Um, mm -hmm. Like when you talked about that, that helped me make sense of my femininity. And the reason I'm talking about this so much, mm -hmm. forgive me is that I know that if a strong woman is listening to this and she hears the title of this book, she's going to bristle like I did and she's not going to catch the message and her husband's yeah. going to be just as afraid of her as he was before. And so a, a lot of this message is for the wives. Like if your husband is reading this book, don't discount it as like toxic or whatever. Like don't do all the things that a strong bitchy woman is like going to do. And so can you talk more about polarity and a, like like you even said, if it's like a masculine energy and a masculine energy, there's no polarity. There's no juiciness is what you said, which I thought was a great word. Uh, so talk more about that concept. Yeah, let's let's start by just saying there's this is opt-in. 
This is not compulsory in any way. And that's, that's, you know, for those strong women that you talked about, that's the first thing I want them to understand. If you want to be in your masculine energy, cool. There's going to be an outcome of that. Mm -hmm. And it's either going to be no polarity or a reverse polarity. Mm -hmm. And if he's not bought into being in the feminine, he's going to feel like shit about himself and he's going to fight back. Right. So this is this advice is and this construct that we're discussing is about people that want to opt in. And quite frankly, you could reverse it. If you're if everybody's cool with that, then great. So really the gender doesn't matter. But I'm just talking to my core audience. It's men that want to be dot dot dot. You you you're with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's opt in. And it's it's this is not about when you're cleaning the garage necessarily or just getting through life. This is when you want to go into moments of intimacy. And I don't necessarily mean physical intimacy, mm -hmm. it's just you know, being intimate with each other at whatever level. Mm -hmm. And when you go into that, it's so important when you have someone who's in, inhabiting directionality. This is the, the word I like to use instead of masculine sometimes. It helps mm -hmm. take the charge off for some people. Mm -hmm. Somebody's creating directionality and structure, and somebody's being receptive, responsive, and expressive. Mm -hmm. And that's where the fun begins when she, and I'm, I'll, now I'll start to assign gender mm -hmm. per my core audience, right. you know, she can be in her expressiveness and her wildness and her, uh, and her delight because she's chosen, she wants to surrender in that because she feels safe enough with him and mm -hmm. the, the structure that he's holding, the awareness and consciousness that he's holding in the moment. Um, it's a choice on her part to surrender into that. And it's a choice on his part to step into that. And so it, you know, the three elements of the blueprint are what I mean when I say him stepping into that masculine pole. And so mm -hmm. it's him becoming grounded and still and very present. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to be grounded and still and very present. I mean, she can choose to be, but she can be in her wildness. Mm -hmm. But that man in his masculine pole is is holding that that groundedness, that witnessing for for her expressiveness. Um, he's setting direction. He might uh, he's making the the simplest one that everybody understands is is making plans for dinner. You know, like the other night, I just I just made a reservation for my woman. I didn't even tell her where we were going. She loved it. Mm -hmm. I you love know? it for her. I got yeah. excited just now. <laughs> <laughs> But one piece of that, and there's a lot of digressions that I'll just mention here, but one of them is if I'm going to lead like that with that directionality, I have to be attuned to her. And that's mm -hmm. where this where this is not steamrolling. This is not domineering. This is not telling her what to do. I have to be attuned to what she likes. So I, you know, for instance, I know what parts of town she likes. I know that she likes to go to new places. I know, I know that she eats a certain set of food because she's vegetarian. So mm -hmm. I checked all that out and made mm -hmm. sure that the place that I chose was appropriate for her. And I'd like to think that I'm attuned to her in, in these ways. Mm -hmm. And so this directionality requires this attunement um, rather than just doing what I want and steamrolling her. Right. 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 Do you and then the last part of that. Sorry. It, yeah, yeah sorry. Keep talking. I'll just say this last part, Melanie. And then the last part of this is create safety. So physical, financial, and, and most importantly, emotional, because mm -hmm. I think that's the most prominent one that we need to focus on creating that safety in her so she can surrender in the bedroom uh, mm -hmm. sorry i see i jumped all right to the bedroom <laughs> surrender Look in at. this dynamic <laughs> and there's ways that that plays out in the bedroom right that was delightful <laughs> we'll talk about that absolutely like uh, so for for folks who haven't read the book we're talking about the three core tenets of the book the the ideas of respond versus reacting providing structure within the home, within mm -hmm. the relationship. And this is coming from the, the masculine to the feminine, right? And then create safety. And one, let, let's kind of, let's not kind of, let's just go ahead and dive into the theories or, or the fundamentals of uh, respond versus react. And I, as I was reading through respond versus react, the first thing that came to my mind as, so I do some consulting work downtown Seattle in homeless communities and stuff. And it's, it's rough. It's, you know, I'm always situational awareness. Okay. What's going on? All this stuff, right? Like looking out and there's a lot of first responders that come in fire trucks, EMTs, stuff like that. And I thought of it in this context, what, what do we call those people who come to help when shit hits the fan? First responders. We don't call them first reactors. They come mm. and go, Oh shit, I can't believe it was. There. No, it, it's not that right. <laughs> So that context, and I was just thinking about it, it's like, oh, responding. A person that responds has thoughts, 
mm-hmm. about, you know, m- not maybe not every single possible scenario, but a lot of the typical scenarios that may happen. They're intentional. They have training. They have planning. They have contingencies. It's all this stuff, right? And so a wise man in his masculine would do all this stuff to know about his lady, to know about his family, to be able to respond rather than be caught off guard and react, right? And it's just like, I know the times that I have responded and not reacted, whatever is coming this way, it's like, boom, this is the lighthouse in the storm kind of thing. It's like, okay, Mm -hmm. this sucks. You know, I don't like being, you know, feeling this way, but as long as I can stay grounded and respond, it's like, okay, we get through issues Mm -hmm. a whole lot quicker. And on the other side of it, a whole lot more like connected too. Yeah. It feels so much safer. Like you just said that when I respond versus react and I immediately had a sense of, oh, that's safe. That feels good. Right. Like I'm not. It's going to. Yeah. It's going to feel safe for sure. Yeah. What we're talking about is a scenario where there's some kind of stimuli and it's like, oh shit. You know, there's sort of a eyes widening. And what that means is something's touched a wound and somewhere in my nervous system, somewhere along in my psyche throughout my life, something's been activated. And now my nervous system is up. Mm-hmm. And with the nervous system being up comes the anxiety that feels like a shaky energy that is that is uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. At this point, we have a choice. You can either take the, the next action you take is something that's trying to make this discomfort stop, which is which is what your reactivity is about, mm-hmm. or you can operate out of choice. And I, I always say this, the, your non-masculine behaviors are your body's attempt to make the discomfort of anxiety go away. Mm-hmm. That's really so. Mm-hmm. If Melanie's mad at you and you get defensive, that is your attempt to change her mind about being mad. So she won't be mad, and then she'll get off your case, and you'll feel better, and the discomfort will go away. Mm-hmm. Or to stonewall her, mm-hmm. or to blame her. All those are attempts to make the anxiety go away. Mm-hmm. None of them include actually feeling into her pain, because right. really that's what she wants deep. And I don't want to speak for you, Melanie, but yeah, that's what the feminine wants deep down. Is just first you want us to feel your pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we can take it from there. So what I teach men to do is first and foremost, you've got to do things that address your nervous system and start to ground your nervous system and create more capacity for interpersonal intensity. Mm -hmm. And that's where the work of chapter 10, which is the embodiment work. It's also the the subject of my second book, Mm -hmm. um, that I published a few months back. It's all about embodiment practice. And I, I think I say this in every conversation I have about this embodiment is the number one thing that a man can do to ground his nervous system and and from there build his masculine core. Mm -hmm. Because once my nervous system is grounded, that anxiety is now taken out of the system or at least minimized. Mm -hmm. Now I'm free to operate out of choice. How do I want to Mm -hmm. operate? I'm not operating out of needing to make something stop, but like either um, I'm going to operate out of my own needs and boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm going to operate out of care for my woman and really feeling into her uh, emotional state and or just operate out of choice in the sense of what will serve the greater love between us now. And all those are choices rather than Pavlovian reactions. And so mm. I am really, really big on men doing a daily embodiment practice. And mm. I could just, you know, I could go on and on about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you, I want to ask another question, but so we you you tap gonna... my leg, but so uh, about the, the work of embodiment and also settling down your nervous system and and all this stuff. You know, a lot of us have trauma. A lot of us have, you know, shitty things that have happened yeah. to us, right? And if we can go, okay, this happened to me. How did it happen for me kind of thing and reframe that, right? But some, there's the great book by um, a psychiatrist, The Body Keeps the Score, right? And it's like yeah. this yeah. stuff comes up. You know, Jordan Peterson talks about, you know, conflict avoided is conflict multiplied. And if I avoid the conflict of like, oh, I need to take care of something that happened to me that had nothing to do with you, but it still comes up, you know, in my nervous system, it manifests itself in different ways, anxiety, depression, anger, whatever, stonewalling, withdrawing. I have to first identify that and then create a practice around that. So could could you speak to the guys who are like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, you know, that happened a long time ago. It doesn't matter now kind of thing, you know, because a lot of guys think that and, 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 you know, that's probably just a mask of like, yo, that stuff is way too hard. I'm not even going to deal with mm-hmm. it. I'm just trying to get yeah. by today mm-hmm. kind of yeah. thing. But what are some real practices? I know you talk about it in the book, but just, you know, for our listeners who, who may not pick up the book. Yeah. Well, I, well, I think the first thing you asked me was, what would you say to that guy? 
Mm-hmm. And I'd say, brother, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, I get it. And, and the entire world of psychology has figured out that it actually does, you know. And here's, but here's how I describe it. I'd say, you know, you know how when your woman freaks out and you're like, whoa, what the fuck just happened? And it's mm-hmm. like 10 times, well, that's her trauma. You've whatever you did catalyzed it, but the the amplitude of the of the wave mm-hmm. is her trauma. Mm-hmm. And you know that same stupid dysfunctional thing you keep doing, brother? Mm -hmm. That's your trauma. That's the thing that you can't tolerate and you've packed away. And so you have these compensatory strategies, like they're maladaptive strategies, Mm -hmm. as as a psychiatrist would say. Um, So if you, despite your best intentions to not stonewall your woman and you keep doing it, that's that's your trauma. You don't have to go figure it out and and punch pillows and cry about it if you don't want to. Like Mm -hmm. You don't have to go delve into it. Just know that there's this unseen thing that makes you keep going back to your patterns despite your intention not to. Mm -hmm. And let's use that as your evidence that something's in you that's below the cognitive, below the mind, and it's controlling you at times. And from that, let's do some embodiment practice. Let's build your capacity. So I I don't make them go into their emotions and things like that necessarily, but I, I we look at the silhouette and and by painting the silhouette it's very clear there's something underneath and that's usually how I approach a guy who's who's kind of resistant to the whole idea of of trauma and the lasting impact of trauma. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask a question now? Go for it. Uh, do you find that this work is harder for couples to do when the woman comes from a matriarchal family, like where it's like no mom was the boss? Um. Yeah, I just I would say there's all kinds of flavors of you can circumstances say yes, it's fine. <laughs> that yeah, well, it's yeah, it's yes and right. it's like yeah, there's when the mom was the boss yeah. or when daddy didn't pay attention to her. You know, mm. you guys have a lot of daddy issues. Sometimes mm-hmm. we have a lot of mommy issues, and so, yeah. or it could be flipped. Mm-hmm. But I can say it's it's yeah. I mean, it's it's usually one of those things. Mommy or daddy had some dysfunctional way of being with them mm-hmm. um, that has them well, carry the dysfunction into their own life. Right. Yeah. Well, and there's an element of that. Again, I'm saying this with the clients that I work with, there tends to be when I have, and I have loads of really strong ladies that I work with and I have yeah. seen a pattern. I'm like, oh, their moms were the boss. Mm-hmm. They really were. Like there's just no two ways about it. Dad yeah. knew it. Dad couldn't say anything, but it was a bad kind of boss. Their mom was like a oligarch. I don't even know if I'm using that right. Yeah. She's authoritative. It was like, yeah. you will do what I say. And, and I'm, and I don't, no one's even going to question it. And if so, you do, everyone's going to suffer. You wouldn't, know that, I mean? wouldn't that be the mom like working out of too much masculine? Like in, in, the, in the context of what we're talking about, like, oh, this mom was leading from her masculine more than feminine. That's what, I mean, the way Melanie describes it, absolutely. That's what's right. happening. Yeah. And, and so, then the women grow up with sometimes with a really chronic disappointment in men. And so when their man doesn't step up, then are you they're talking about it's even me? worse. Mm. You're talking about me, sir. I mean, it's, that's, that's the, again, I'm asking so many questions about this because yes, I think it's important for men to understand this, but it's, man, is it important for women who are strong Mm -hmm. and who come from these matriarchal places or they think, well, he's not doing it, so I'm going to do it and you can never call me feminine. And and like, they just build this wall of like, I'm so angry. I'm so disappointed, but I'm never even going to tell you that anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just leading everything. And to get back into that softness even the like even the word softness like it just makes me irritated like i don't want to be seen as soft i want to be seen as like my kind of strong so actually do you have yeah. like ways to explain what really powerful strong femininity looks like feminine looks like so that ladies like me can understand it better yeah well it's there's strong feminine and then there's there's feminine I, and i think you didn't mean the strong is in in the masculine no 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 sorry yeah who's... i meant just like yeah yeah, I will. And um, I won't claim to be the expert on the feminine. I, I right. focus on the other side of the equation. And rem- and let's just make sure everybody understands we're talking about an energy here, not how anybody should be. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, But this is all out of chapter seven. And, you know, with the feminine, like if I just think, let me just do it in real life. Like I'll think of my woman mm-hmm. and the ways that I see her and her feminine energy. And she... I just imagine her in that space because she can be in a strong masculine too. But when she's in her feminine, 
her smile lights up, you know, the smile is not both in her mouth and in her eyes. Mm -hmm. She, her, she feels heart open to me. She's expressive. She's nurturing and taking care of me in certain ways. She's playful. And even to the point she'll give me shit, you know, like it's playfulness. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a receptivity to her, to my lead, you know, if I choose to provide it in that moment. And, um, you know, the playfulness, the radiance, um, the openness, the open heartedness, like that is, it's like gold to me. Mm-hmm. And I think to a lot of men, right. as they discover when you're with somebody who's truly in their feminine, it fucking lights me up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I yeah. love it. Yeah. And after 10 years, it still lights me up. Right. You know, we've been together a long time. Mm-hmm. So, um, th- you know, I could go, we could go deeper into it, but I think those are some of the elements mm-hmm. of the feminine that I, I know I would want to bring out. I do want right. to bring out in a partner that that I'm with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think, again, I am going to ask as many questions as humanly possible while you're here. Uh, but I think, can you do those things? Can you have that smile that is inviting and lights people up while also like wearing car hearts and building furniture and like building, you know what I'm saying? Like that, again, that's where mm-hmm. I have a block where when I hear feminine, no joke. What I see in my mind is think of like Instagram, flowy skirt, long hair, big hat on the beach, holding a Mai Tai, whatever the hell that is, nails done. Like all, I think of clothes. I literally think of clothes, fashion, aesthetic, vibe. Yeah. And so I yeah. think this is me saying I have a real block here because how am I feminine if I'm building furniture or raising dogs or a farmer? Can I be a feminine farmer? I know that I, that sounds like a stupid question, but I'm asking for a very purposeful yeah. reason. Well, you're you, okay. You're talking at the level of an identity. Can can I be? And you sort of phrase that in the totality: a feminine farmer, as if this person is one thing. And right. think about it. Maybe let's just just talk about it more moment by moment. Mm-hmm. I'm imagining, you know, in one moment you could have a hard hat and a hammer. And be doing the carpentry or whatever the activity you described, and you could plan the whole project. And then later that day, you go take a shower, you take those clothes off, you put on something different, mm-hmm. and you soften, you open, and and you maybe you know you opt into following Cecily that night. Mm-hmm. You can flow from moment to moment. For me, I, the ideal I'd wish for any woman is that she can float between her masculine and feminine at, at her choosing, depending mm-hmm. on what's happening. Mm-hmm. And not not have it be unconscious, like swinging the hammer all day, you come home and you're still in that energy and your husband's like, whoa, like uh, this doesn't feel soft and fun and safe for me. Right, right, right. So it's really, can you, can you, do you know how to manifest both? And do you know how to make a choice mm. appropriate to the moment mm-hmm. about where you're going to be? Mm-hmm. Right. That's, that's super really, helpful. Yeah. 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 Now, now, I mean, this is kind of getting more conversation, but I think it's like super awesome. And so... For 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 me, like I, and I really love how you give caveats often to like, hey, people are opting into this, and mm-hmm. it doesn't like I I really appreciate that piece because um, I think it's important, not just because like, oh yeah, our time and it's it's like no, I appreciate it for what it is. It's like, oh, this is this is a very more thoughtful approach than just some dude, you know, whatever, you know, toxic stuff, right? What? But yeah. so in. We, we all have masculine and feminine energies in us, right? I have more masculine than feminine, but there are times when, because it really sounds like you have a narrative, like a paradigm mm-hmm. of like, mm-hmm. oh, a feminine woman is not much that I really want to be. Yes. Like you well associate said. it with like some, you know, Barbie doll stuff mm-hmm. who doesn't get fingernails dirty or doesn't right. do half the things that you do and mm-hmm. half the things that you and I do together. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that would be me saying, well, man, I have a hard time with masculinity because it's just, you know, beer drinking and like, you know, Axe banging throwing. women, you know, 24 seven or what, or what it's not, not what you I know, thought he was gonna say. and just like <laughs> frat parties or stuff like that. It's like, well, hold up. No, I am much, much more complex yeah. than that. And I feel like I am fairly comfortable enough going into the, I'm air quoting feminine because I don't know how else to say it like in the more emotional things, it's like, mm-hmm. shit, I'm having a hard day. I'm going to reach out to you and maybe cry in front of you and say, hey, I need your feminine. Can you just hug me? And like kind mm-hmm. of, I mean, that you've said it before. It's like the feminine has been 
pure medicine to mm. my masculine mm -hmm. in those times. Right. You know, like, okay, I'm struggling, having a hard time with whatever mm -hmm. it is, but this is funny. Maybe, maybe I think that is some work that you have, which oh, for sure. it's no, it's no diss or anything. It's right. like, in, in fact, it's more exciting and more enlight um, right. enlightening of like, oh, wait a minute, shift your paradigm to mm -hmm. what you think feminine is. Because like you were saying, it's like, Dude, when you're in your feminine and you're soft and everything, all I'm thinking about is like, you know, hey, let's go, <laughs> you know, let's let's go, let's do this thing right now. And because it is so intoxicating, and it's not just about sex, like, oh, you're in your feminine, I just want to, you know, have sex with you. It's not that. It's like, oh man, this is so. You know how I talk talk about a serendipitous exchange mm -hmm. often. It's like, oh man, I am in my masculine, you're in your feminine. It's just like cosmic kind of like oh this is how it was designed okay right. yeah let's right. lean into this mm -hmm. so i'm i'm really encouraged by you right seeing that well, and, and working through again it. that's why i wanted to ask so many questions it's like in where i grew up so i grew up outside of seattle i went to seattle all the time feminine is like the f word there you don't you're not feminine yeah. you wear doc martens you you know, you wear this, you have your flannel on, you listen to yeah. Nirvana. If you're feminine, you're dumb. You're depressed and... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, literally, it's, it's really, right. it's obvious to me now, as we're talking, it is, like, I'm looking at it really much like an identity. Like, if you're this, you can't be that. Like, I'm not allowing complexity around the ideas yeah. of masculine and feminine. And then it makes me think of the polarity concept. Like, if, and I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, or if you talk about this in more detail... Uh, please add to it. But I was just thinking like, what are, if I'm thinking of polarities, like, a, you know, north and what am I saying on a magnet? What are they? North positive, and, negative, positive, north, positive, south, positive yeah. negative, north, south. <laughs> if I'm thinking of it like that, I'm like, oh, it's opposite. So if it's hard, it's soft. If it's, you know, like, what are the opposite things to each other? And mm -hmm. are those like polarity things? So if you come into a room and you're agitated, is the pol is the like polar opposite of that would that be like calm? And if I bring that to you, does that become like this helpful, attracting thing? Does that make sense? Um, no. <laughs> How about you talk about polarity more? Because I'm trying to work through like a concept in my head, but is it, yeah. Know. Is there a deeper question? Um, it's is it more, like how? Uh huh. It's more like I'm I'm trying to figure out because again, I have very like firm ideas in my mind of like, no, being feminine means this and being masculine means that. And I'm not allowing flexibility. And the more that I allow flexibility, it softens me. The more that I allow it, I become more flexible in my thinking and what I see. And then I can actually see where I can step into my feminine femininity in a way that is a balance. It's a, it makes that yin and yang. It may, like before I couldn't see it. But now something in what we're saying is helping me see it more and I'm not yeah. articulating it at all. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. The end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if you, if playing with more cultivation of, of the feminine energy would be mm. something that would be interesting to take on yeah. and, oh, and how the two of you could do that. And I'm imagining, I mean, you're quick. I, I mean, I, that's very obvious from the moment we got on. You're just, you're, and that's one of the problems that a lot of guys have. They're like, God, my, my wife is just, she just thinks about things 10 days in advance and I haven't even started to think about it. And she's already got it figured out. And mm -hmm. I have two choices. I either fight back because I'm kind of pissed on behind or I just do what she wants. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, this is a huge challenge for, a lot of men. So let's use that to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, as illustrating this challenge for men in general. And one of the things that I've heard su uh, suggested to a woman who wanted to just intentionally cultivate more of that was, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a situation where you guys are trying to figure out what to do, and maybe Seth has gone a little directionless, no offense, Seth. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he's just not really stepping up and kind of bringing it. And mm -hmm. your tendency would be to, to jump right in because you probably have a pretty good sense of things. Mm -hmm intentionally sit back and say, I, Seth, I need you to lead this. Mm -hmm. And just, it's like a practice mm -hmm. uh, and just sit back and, and wait and see what happens. Right. And I, and well, I'll just, I'll, I think I'll leave it at that, but that's a practice that I know a lot of women who are very powerful mm -hmm. have gone, have decided to try uh, right. occasionally and intentionally to bring more of that polarity. And then when the man is, is lovingly called out like that, he's more likely to step up mm -hmm. as opposed to, him not doing it and then you criticizing him later and with a kind of an air of disgust. Mm -hmm. um, so there are practices that the women can do to um, 
cultivate that. That's and it doesn't feel good at first. Like but. criticizing him later with an air of disgust. Like, I'm sorry, do you live in our house? Like what? I don't know <laughs> well, how you was, know me so well. That was the old well. you when, when we were really going through <laughs> right. like, the shit. Um, so I want to, uh, so, okay, we, we talked a little bit about respond versus react. And let's, let's focus now on providing structure in that. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, structure starts with clarity. So I really, a lot of men have their radar pointed out, and I'm going to point this at Melanie because she's mm -hmm. the she's the female here. It's like they've got on the rim, and it's like, what do you want? And I'll give it to you, and then you'll be happy, mm -hmm. you know. And and women sort of feel that they're like, dude, where are you in this whole thing? Mm -hmm. It might feel good at first, but after the first year of the relationship, you're like, okay, where are you? And so I really, I work a lot with men to turn inward and get clarity about what they need and what they want and what they prefer and what their boundaries are. And then you, then you couple that, as we talked about before, with attunement into their woman. Okay, what, I know what I want now. I've developed inner clarity. I know her well enough to fold that in. And now I'm going to go external with it and express it to her. Mm. Maybe... We've talked about trying to plan our summer vacation. I actually did some research. Here's three places that I love to go. I want to go to Slovenia. I've always wanted to go to Naples and the south, southern coast of Spain. And I would love to go to one of these three. Let's look at this together. How does this work for you? Or it's like, baby, I want to go to Italy. We want to go, let's stay up on the Amalfi Coast. I already checked it out and here's what it'll cost. Like, how does that land for you? So what you're seeing is it starts with clarity. It's not about like, if this is not about the dominance of like yeah. pitch, you know, you're going to do it my way, mm -hmm. which is sort of a caricature, but it's, it has to actually start with that clarity. Like mm -hmm. that's the headline here. And then I do um, the technique I teach is clarity plus inclusion. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I have my clarity and so shall it be. It's how does that work for you? Right. You know, now I'm including you. And then she can either say, hell no to all of that. Or she could say, oh, I like choice B or, well, I like choice B, but, but, you know, maybe let's couple it with this other thing, mm -hmm. but you've really used your clarity to kind of move the ball forward and, and narrow down the world of uncertainty. And I don't know, Melanie, when Seth does things to kind of narrow down the uncertainty into a more definable kind of more finite, does, I mean, it probably feels good. It feels sexy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like even when yeah. you were saying that just now, you were like, you need to know, like you're, you are very good at what you do. You just were like, when it's okay to have your husband be pointed, everything's aimed at you for about a year. And then at some point you're like, what is happening? Cause it's, it's like a lot of pressure on me mm -hmm. to yeah. always have like a decision know, fatigue. It, it kind of is. To, yeah. To a degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then yes. it, it becomes like, I can see that this isn't really going to work and it isn't fulfilling to him to constantly just be aiming at me. And the second you said, okay, if I can turn this back at myself and find clarity within myself, what do I want? When you said yeah. that, I was like, ooh, that's sexy. Mm -hmm. Like that. And that is not, I am not that lady that's like, oh, that's sexy to everything all the time. So that yep. says a lot to me when I th yeah. when I think of you doing that, being mm -hmm. like, oh, yep, I'm all coast, this, this, and that. We're gonna eat here. This what do you think about those? Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yeah. holy cow, that's amazing. Well, yeah. uh, here, here's here's an example. And this has happened a whole lot more. I would say definitely like just within the last two years, you mm -hmm. know, it's like more of a co-collaborator, but right. I'm like leading a lot of stuff. So yesterday I was thinking, okay, you know, what do we want to do when it gets super shitty out here in like the winter months where it's, you know, only dark for 24 hours. So in eight minutes from now. Right. Okay. And uh, we're like, okay, we know that we want to go somewhere sunny, you mm -hmm. know? So I was like mapping out the kids' schedules. Hey, we have a week here, a week here, and a week here. And I showed you. Yeah. I was like, hey, here's the times when the kids are going. Mm -hmm. We talked about going somewhere, you know, let's choose a week. And, the, you know, I mean, that like, took it off your plate. You're like, oh, well, I was thinking about, you know, right. dog shit and like, you know, kids homework or something. Um, thank you for thinking of yeah. that. And then yeah. I'll, you know, you choose a time, mm -hmm. we'll choose a place kind of thing. So creating that structure and it ma makes me think of a, a, a phrase, Jocko Willink, the Navy SEAL, the former Navy SEAL talks about discipline equals freedom. Mm -hmm. And when there is structure around stuff that yeah. also facilitates a sense of freedom, mm -hmm. like, Hey, yes. here's our choices. One, two, three. Yeah. Thank you so much. Because you know, all I've been thinking about today is like kids taking kids to mm -hmm. soccer practice yeah. or this or this or this. You eliminated all that thinking and narrowed it down to three choices. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. And then. But I, yeah. but to reiterate, didn't make the choices for me. You said, here's three. What do you mm -hmm. think? Like mm -hmm. it's an, that inclusivity part is so yeah. important. 
It's like you create a container within which freedom can be found, you know, as opposed to the wide open world. It's kind of like when empty nesters, like the kids leave, they're like, shit, now I have time to do whatever I want and I have no idea what to do. It's like too much. Right. You create that container within which there's freedom. And what that, that reminds me of, of like tango. So I, I try to tango. And tango is a very strong lead follow, but it's not about like this rigid frame and, you know, I'm going to move her the way that, that I want and she can't, she has to just follow. Mm -hmm. the, the greatest tango dancers, they, they do have good structure, but they also leave her lots of freedom for embellishment so she can bring her magic. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about here is you narrow it, you create a container within which the other person has that freedom. Mm -hmm. Dude, do you run, you should, if you don't do this, you should. You should do tango retreats for masculinity. And every one would leave pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Just I mean, no. I mean, that sounds I'm, a little scandalous. <laughs> I know. That Everyone. Does sound, that does sound weird. It came out different what, than I what, what are you running? What kind of retreat is yeah, this? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but there was one more comment, Seth, that I was using. I was bouncing off your example of, of the vacation that you were planning. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go on a limb here, but let's, let's watch Melanie's face. Mm. It's not only that you kind of took some things off her plate, but the fact that you did that planning, it's another signal that you give a shit and you yeah. care. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it just, it's so you get like the double helping of, of, mm -hmm. you know, return on that investment mm -hmm. um, because it is a signal that you care. It's, it's acts of service. If you know the, you, of course, you know, the yeah. five love languages, that's acts of service when you did that calendar sync up and and then brought it to her. So it, again, tons of benefit. Like, yeah. Like I think too, I'm going to really reiterate, like I'm not the type of person that's like, Oh, that's so sexy. But that was, he showed it to you me right it. before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right before we did an interview earlier. And he's like, yeah. Hey, look, here's the dates that the kids are on school vacation. Here's where we're going to take a trip somewhere. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> like I'm here for that. I'll like, go anywhere. <laughs> I know. Take me now. Hell yeah. Um, then that's, it's all worth it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which is exciting. I mean, just mm -hmm. to, and I, I'm saying this out loud and sharing it intentionally so that women can hear this strong women. When you, when you can help create and facilitate this, uh, like, I don't even know, like fostering of masculinity that is healthy and life-giving within your relationship, yeah. it feeds you as well. It's not because it does, mm -hmm. I think for women along a lot of times, we feel like femininity is like the vessel we're just like pouring out all the time. People are taking shit from us. That's how it feels sometimes. And so to know that it can generatively hand back to me is exciting mm -hmm. and make yes. me feel a certain way is very, very exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, in a lot of ways, this masculine, this core masculine persona that I'm describing, it's, it, there's a lot of service involved in that, you know, and really creating structure for your woman as a gift Preach. so that she can step out of the role. I and mean, a lot of these, these women we're talking about, they've got kids, they've got careers, they're busting their ass already. It's like, they don't need any more. Mm -hmm. So to right. be relieved of anything, even temporarily feels really damn good, which mm -hmm. is, I'm reiterating what you're describing. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's a, it's sure. a respite. So guys, how can you create a respite for your wife, not mm -hmm. just be some needy bitch that says, we haven't had sex in three weeks. Oh, come on. You yeah. know, throw me a bone. It's like, do you think that's going to work? No, it's not. Right. So, okay. Third point, create safety. I want to talk a little bit about that. Of course, physical safety. Um, I don't know any guys that wouldn't go to the door at 2 a.m., you know, or, 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 you know, try to make their wives do it. I don't know dudes. Maybe there are some, but there I, don't, are. I don't know them, right? So physical safety is a part, emotional safety, which is probably the the biggest one, and then financial safety, mm -hmm. because it, within safety also lie, within lies uh, trust, mm -hmm. too. Like, I can trust this person to create safety physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, financially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, which one do you want to talk about? I know. First? What, yeah, what? Well, well, just the just the the <clears throat> the idea. Okay, let's talk about physical safety. Create safety, physical safety within the relationship. Actually, yeah. no. Can I say emotional safety instead? Because that's what women actually want. All right. Mm -hmm. I, well, most. Can we arm wrestle for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies' choice, Seth. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, emotional. I mean, emotional safety is the biggest one. That's obviously that's what I wrote about in the book. Um, although in, in the next sequel, I'll, I will write more about physical and financial. I think there's important topics and we'll touch on some of them. Yeah, emotional safety. I can't think of a bigger 
uh, what am I trying to say? Determinant of a woman's openness, how, how much her heart is open, how much her body is open is whether or not there's trust and safety present. Mm -hmm. And yeah, emotional safety, it's easy on paper, super hard in real life. And, and it's like, she's having an emotional experience and do we validate that? And I'm sure you guys talk about this all the time on your podcast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could, we guys, we get a lot into the content of what she's saying. And then we immediately, if there's anything about us, we're like, but, 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 right. Here's what you got to understand. <laughs> Yes. I had this fun I had this funny video I put up because I was skiing um about 3 years ago and I and I got off the lift and I was walk, you know kind of going somewhere and I I walked by this couple and this woman's holding this little girl's hand and this guy it looks they just approached each other and she's like where have you been blah 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 it's clear they had gotten yeah. separated on the trail mm -hmm. and he and she's all fired up and he's like wait a minute before you get mad at me, you got to understand what happened. And it was the biggest example that I've ever seen of, of trying to squash the emotional with informational. So it's like, mm -hmm. stop having your emotional reaction while I give you some new information yeah. so right. that you won't be mad. And, and like, how often does that ever work? Yeah. Right. Never. Yeah. That's the, that's like saying, stop being hungry. Right. Um, here's a picture of a steak. Right. Okay. So I, I know you're hungry, but that just you're like, no, I don't yeah. care about that. Give me the steak. You're yeah. like, yes. That's a... a yeah. Mm -hmm. So defensiveness, I, I just to describe defensiveness when she come and I, again, I'm using my sort of genders here, but mm -hmm. when she comes with emotion and he responds with information, that's defensiveness and never the twain shall meet. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's he, one of them might as well be speaking Greek. Like right. he's speaking Greek to her. And of course it's not working because it never does. And so he just speaks Greek louder, mm -hmm. you know, and because we double down on our, no, 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 wait a minute. You got to understand. And that's so painful, right, Melanie? I mean, it's yes. it's super ass painful mm -hmm. when all you want to do is you want to be felt, you want to be received. And this is the art of it. It's like, mm -hmm. how can a man make space for her emotional reality in the moment? Because it could change pretty quickly mm -hmm. without necessarily agreeing. Like there's, there's often a little bit of blame coming at us. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are kind of need to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. But can that man master that art of making space for it, empathizing with it, feeling her pain without necessarily agreeing. He doesn't have to agree or take the blame, mm -hmm. but can he be like, wow, baby, this is, I mean, I, I, I can see this is really mm -hmm. upset you. Right. And I'm right here. I'm right here. Tell me more. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like, it makes me think of this visual. Sorry. I totally cut you off, but I will continue to cut you off. It makes me think of a visual of like having an actual wound and like coming up to be like, oh my gosh, I cut my arm like really, really bad. I don't need you to tell me about how I cut my arm, why I shouldn't have cut my arm, like where the whatever, like hold me, help me yeah. find some band-aids. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you don't need to think it was a great idea that my arm is cut or anything. And that yeah. I just want to like reiterate that because it's so what you're saying is so accurate. Like I don't even need you to agree with me, attuned to the feeling that I'm feeling. But what were you going to say when I cut you off? Uh, I don't remember, but it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's an, it is an art. It's hard because we men, we cannot tolerate, and this is the core of it. So, so maybe we should touch on this. When we get blamed for something, we feel your disappointment in us. And that's like Krypton or no kryptonite. Yeah, yeah. It is disappointment. I mean, Seth, I don't know how you feel about this, but mm -hmm. I think most guys, including us, mm -hmm. like when our woman's disappointed and they give us that look, my woman gives me the forehead. She kind of wrinkles her forehead up. That's why I got Botox. I can't even do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel the disgust like conveyed through the forehead wrinkle of like, and it's, it's hard. It's hard. And then we feel like, oh, I can't, I don't want to feel like this. So I better defend myself. Mm -hmm. I better change her mind. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, you know, if you want to go towards mastery, that's what men need to do is how can they separate taking blame versus staying in the fire, empathizing with her, meeting her at that level. Mm -hmm. And like I said in the book, feelings first, facts later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Feelings first, facts later. Deal with the feelings first, meet her there, and then it'll come down. And then you can do all the information sharing you want, right. but after, and it's a sequencing problem mm -hmm. that I want men to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's acknowledging those feelings, staying grounded in that. And tell me what we can say to the guys because okay like i if if she's bringing a shit show and i'm you know a hot mess myself then it's just going to be bonkers right 
So first, yeah. I have to go out and find out how I can regulate myself, how I can heal all the wounds or trauma or whatever, and have a daily practice around that and go, hey, you know, in, in, in psychology, we call it differentiation, right? Differentiation of self. Like, no matter what comes my way, I know my core, I know who I am, I know my purpose, whatever. Yeah. And there have been times where I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, which is a really strong time within our relationship. Uh, but guys have to have that first. Otherwise, they may read this stuff or listen to these words mm -hmm. and go, well, yeah, okay, good, good idea. But like, she's just pummeling me, you know, mm -hmm. where do I have my boundaries around that? Am I just supposed to take it and bend over and just like, you know, have all this stuff? So what would you say to those guys who have those questions? Because I know a lot of them do. Yeah, well, I'd say read chapter 14, because that's what chapter 14 was all about. It's, mm -hmm. it's titled You're a Woman. Mm -hmm. And it gives a, a list of strategies that you can use when she comes at you with a head of steam. Mm -hmm. And um, the first one was empathy. I think that's generally the most effective. The feminine is just dying to be felt in her pain. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that if we don't, if we can't go there and feel her pain with us, She's going to find a way to make us feel that pain. And that's yeah. where she amps it up and it hits you with an even bigger laser beam. Yeah. She just wants to feel you feeling her, which I know sort of sounds circular and takes a moment, but she right. just wants to feel you feeling her in that moment. Um, and standing strong and in your grounded presence with her. Yeah. Um, there's other things that you can do. Curiosity. Sometimes you might be like, what are you, I don't know what we're even talking about here. So baby, tell me more. Like you're, I get that you're really upset at me around um, having come home late. Tell me what's going on. Cause I'm, I'm not understanding. So curiosity is one way you can go down. Mm -hmm. Now you got to be judicious where you use that. And we could talk more about that. Um, but I'll, I'll keep moving on the list. Uh, humor is a great one. I mean, when my woman comes with a head of steam, sometimes I just like, I don't know. I mean, in the most egregious, I picked her up over my shoulder and spanked her on the ass 10 times. <laughs> and I'm like, no, baby, <laughs> we're not going to go there. We're not going to fight like that. Yeah. And um, and luckily, it hasn't blown up on me too much when I use humor. <laughs> um, it can go the wrong way where she feels invalidated. Right. And so, you, you know, again, like all this, it's, it's, it's the art of it. Yeah. Um, boundaries is another way. Sometimes Sometimes her behavior is inappropriate mm -hmm. and it's like, no, no. And, and what I say about boundaries is you have to say it in a way that's still connected. It's not like you can't talk to me like that. I'm out of here. Right. That's, that's not a connected boundary. That's not serving the greater love, mm -hmm. but you could be like, baby, I love you. And mm -hmm. we're not going to treat each other that way. Right. And I'm open to what you have to say, but we're not going to go there. So mm -hmm. keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can do that from a grounded place. And then maybe she's like, your your groundedness kind of shocks her out of her right mm -hmm. phase um so these are all different ways that you can approach and but it's like a you know with a strong woman which is the archetype that we're we're often talking about here it's 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 you know it's dangerous sometimes yeah. you gotta yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta master the artistry of this whole thing and you'll never get it right and it's okay you know, as long as you're just moving towards more connection. Yeah. Um, but when you start doing this, then her trust builds. And actually, she starts freaking out a little less because mm -hmm. she kind of already knows that you can stay in the fire and be there for her. So she, she doesn't need to get as amped up. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, we're mm -hmm. we're getting validation right now from yeah. from Melanie's nodding. Yeah. yeah. That was anyway, good. yeah. so much to say. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. This that was, gold. I love all of this. I mean, I think it's so helpful. And I want to just say again to the women who are listening, if you resonated with any of the things here, you got work to do as well. Like, listen, what I want to validate right here is like this entire book is about how men are showing up. And I hear all the time, like men don't do anything. Men are just whatever. Like all these terrible things about how dudes do nothing. They know nothing. They're whatever. That's not okay to say. It's not okay to say these things anymore. It's, it never was. And this book right here is evidence of how complicated we are to work with as partners, mm -hmm. as women. So how can we show up differently for that? How can we honor the work that you're doing mm -hmm. in that? You know, and I just think there's, sometimes I want to hold women's feet to the fire a little bit and be like, hey, be easier here, you know? Yeah. And I'll, if I can add one thing onto yeah. that, a lot of women have reached out to me and said, oh my God, thank you. 
you've given me the words to describe a longing and a craving that I've always had. I just yeah. didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And so I'd say, you know, for any women listening, like you can actually read the book and then you can start to ask for what you need. Yeah. And I think it goes back to the example we used earlier of like a woman could say, I actually want you to lead us here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, but she, uh, a lot of women wouldn't have necessarily known that maybe unless they read the book and kind of yeah. got the words to say. Mm -hmm. So it, it really, it's, it's for both, <laughs> both sides. Oh to yeah. Read. We'll have to mm -hmm. read it in women's group coaching. I think, ev oh, I think they'd should. all love it and it would be some awesome conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there's one thing like the, the one story that I wanted to Hold just. Hold on. Are we respecting time here? I feel like this has been a long call. Are you good on time? Or you need to. Yeah, I'm, I'm good until. At least six. Okay. Uh, okay. I just want to okay. make sure. Yeah. Well, well I'll, I'll keep it short. But one, one, um, and it seems like I kind of stumbled on this because we were in a really terrible time in, in our marriage. She had just given me a black eye, and I was a therapist for crying out loud. So I'm like, what the hell just happened? Right. We had two little kids. We didn't know our ass from a hole in the ground. It was terrible. Right. And we both were, you know, real mental health issues. Like, okay. We're really going to kill each other or kill ourselves. This is this is bad, right? And of course, we sought therapy and stuff like that. Yeah. But there was one point, and so I grew up um, Christian, right? And you did too, sort of. And so we were really leaving, uh, leaning heavily on our spirituality at that point, right? Um, now, not so much. We're not, you know, religious podcast or anything like that. But it, like, all I knew at the time, I was like, nothing I'm doing is working. Nothing at all. I don't know anything obvious by the state of affairs, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, all I know to do is pray. Like, okay, if Melanie is messing around with like higher power, source, you know, God or whatever, I'm like, then I know that she is having a hard time and she may be wrong for that. But it was my truth at the time, right? I'm like, okay, don't mess with God. So that's all. So anything that you said negative to like my leadership around that, I was like, okay, you're just tripping. That's oh. not going to... Mm -hmm. Uh, deter me from my purpose, mm -hmm. right? So I set prayer alarms, and no matter what I was doing for like a year and a half straight, mm -hmm. call her, hey, it's time to pray. You know, sometimes she'd say, hey, thank you. Sometimes it'd be, hey, fuck you, hurry up. You know, like literally, I'm like, okay, well, there it is. I am going to create that structure and create that safety. And I'll yeah. tell you, that's, I say this with confidence, that is the one thing that like saved our marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No joke. Right. And it's not about like, oh, God worked and this right. and moved. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, listen, we're not getting divorced. Mm -hmm. That's not an option for us. I mean, some people maybe should get divorced. And, right. you know, but for us, that was like, no, this is dumb. We can work through this. Here's the structure. I am not going anywhere or doing anything. Here's what I'm providing, you know, praying six times a day. Mm -hmm. And then eventually she's like, okay, he's not a jerk. He's mm -hmm. trying his best. This is safe. There's structure. Right. I can literally open up to that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. lovingly. You were like setting intentions every day, letting me know like you really were there. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know that like the spirituality piece obviously meant something to you. So again, that was that like attunement kind of thing. It's like, okay, this yeah. this means something. Mm -hmm. So like, and there were times when I wanted to give up in in that and this i'm saying all this for a reason i highlighted well i highlighted a bunch in the book but there's this one line that you even put in bold and i think it's you know you know i don't know one third 95 pages in it says here's what i tell my clients you may or may not be the problem but you are the solution right and you're talking to the masculine men in this and so i give that scenario that really 100 percent no doubt work for us mm -hmm. it's like oh that is powerful because I did step into like mm -hmm. a higher purpose. I knew where I was going. I knew what I wanted. I knew what was important to you. And I said, okay, you can do anything you want, but this right. is what I'm doing. And that was something worth following. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you, GS, you say, you may or may not be the problem, but you are the solution. Can you lean into that for a little bit? And then we'll, we'll kind of tie this, tie this together here. Yeah, I, I, and before I answer that specifically, I want to comment on just one thing you said. You were like, we're not getting divorced and we are going to do some praying here. And God, there's so much power in a man's, you know, when, when you have a relationship that's pretty fucked, mm -hmm. the man step in and say, we are not giving up on this. Mm. Yeah. Because the feminine is going to be like, it's fucked. And, and again, I'm describing the feminine, just these, that's the energy. So that's one energy in her. And he comes in and goes, no, we're going to make this right. Mm -hmm. 
And now he can't be off in la la land and he can't be just speaking just all talk. Obviously, there's a lot of backing up, but there's like a, you know, again, I'm caricaturing the feminine. It's like he says that and she's like, oh, really? We're going to be okay? You know, like your clarity actually kind of transmits into her into more of a belief. So I love I love that example. And I, I recommend that to I just actually I was just coaching a guy to this today because he was really getting into his sadness about how things were starting to unravel. Mm. And as we got in touch with that sadness, he felt a resolve coming up. So I encouraged him to really bring that up. And, and I was teaching him how to speak that to her, that resolve. I do not want us to break up. I want this to work and we're going to. So that assuredness, I have some videos, some YouTube videos on this. Um, let's go back to, to what you, you said. You know, you may or may not be the problem, but you are the solution. And yeah, I love that quote. It's one of my favorites in the book. Um, we tend, we men tend to take the path of least resistance, which is to blame her. And we tend to resist any, you know, blaming of us. We, we go into this like, well, why does the book tell me I have to do all this stuff? What about her? What is she doing? Mm -hmm. And, I, and my, my approach to that is no, you may be the problem. You may not be the problem. It really doesn't matter. What we know for certain is that you're going to step up and lead this couple back into a better place. That's emotional leadership that I want you to take. And I'm trying to cut off the thinking they're doing about whose fault it is. Cause they're always wondering, well, what about her? What about her? Mm -hmm. Well, what if you just stop needing to answer that question? Like, what if there were some questions that don't need to be answered? And this is one of those. And that's what I'm trying to get their, their mind off. Like, I don't give a who, whose fault it is. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you going to do? And that's really what that is about. It's about radical self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a way to counteract a lot of the trap that a guy's fall into. The what about her trap, I guess, mm -hmm. is right. the name that I would give to that. Yeah, because if we're stuck in the what about her, then like your growth, your leadership is contingent on what she does or doesn't do. And is that is that real leadership? Of course, you can, you know, assess and recalibrate and stuff like that. But if 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 I was like, Hey, we're not getting divorced, and I'm praying for you know whatever time period. And you were like, uh, "Well, no, we're not going to do that." You know, it's like I'd be like, "Oh, okay, well, yeah, you're right." You know, fuck it. You know, then then that's not much leadership. That's not. Right. It. But a, a lot of guys, and this is what I say. So I want your thinking on this. And again, we can wrap it up. Jeez, I mean, this is so good, man. We appreciate your time so much. By the way, um, a, a lot of guys go. I'm doing this stuff, like I'm doing what the book says, and maybe she has like, you know, so much past trauma or whatnot that she is just not responding, just not responding. Well, in my thinking, the guys still have power in that because I, I you know, I've told clients before, okay, she's not responding how, you know, maybe you assume that she might or expect. You have a choice to keep on doing this or not. It's still your choice, right? So I can say, okay, after a year of praying and I'm working my ass off and doing everything, I can say, you know what? I refuse to put myself through this anymore. Yeah. And the best yeah. choice for me is I'm out of here. I can walk yeah. away saying I did my damnedest and you know, keep your head high or whatnot. It's like, okay, unfortunate. But we still have the choice mm -hmm. because a lot of guys go, we can complain and complain. I've been doing all this stuff and see, she's still crazy. I'm like, okay. Do it for six more months, and if she's still this way, file mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or you can keep on doing it. And for me, I swear to God, I was in the mindset of like, I don't care what happens. Mm -hmm. I will not stop until things are right. healed, uh, moved forward, like repaired, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't mean we're, you know, it's like, okay, now it's just, you know, sunsets forever anymore there's still you know calibration and recalibration mm -hmm. and so on but um yeah that's just such a powerful I, yeah. thing we always have a choice in that yeah. and i want to say yeah. like one last thought with that idea of if you're saying leadership like literal leadership imagine like you use the saying all the time if you're walking through hell keep going mm -hmm. like don't stop and what i think women often feel is if a man has made that decision like we're going to work on this and fix it it's literally as if he's turning around and he's leading the way to the direction of where health is and she is following him there. And if he turns back around and looks at her and says, well, what about you? What about la? Like all of a sudden no one's going anywhere. Right. You and turn it, your you, back you, on the door towards health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's stopped. And because I've seen that happen so many times where we are working with clients 
and the men know I need to lead, I need to do this, I need to do whatever, but then they keep turning around and stopping and telling their wife what they did wrong. And I'm like, no, just stop doing that. So I love the, I don't know, I just love this sort of like the refreshing kick in the ass of leadership and masculinity for men and relationships and especially for really strong ladies. Like there, it, this is, I don't know, man. You're talking to me the whole time, and I'm here for it, and I'm so, so thankful. I just think this is rad. Yeah, it, it, it's great, man. So yeah. I want to be respectful of your time. Do you have any parting thoughts, and where can people go to find your stuff? You know, where where do you want them to uh, have their eyes? Mm, parting thoughts. Um, I'll throw out a cliche. Yeah, life is too short. Life is too short to stay in this this drainage, this drain hole of dysfunction and relational dysfunction. And, you know, we grip so tightly to who's right and who's wrong. And she said, she said, and the word I want to leave you with is surrender. And we could all use a little more surrender. And, and we didn't talk about this, but we didn't talk about the role of the heart. Mm -hmm. And men really cultivating a capacity to go into their heart and, and how that really is so powerful. And, and, you know, maybe, maybe we'll do another one of these sometime and we can talk about, yeah. talk about the heart. We can talk about the bedroom and how this plays out in the bedroom, mm -hmm. but short of that, just, you know, surrender. Right. Yeah. So what month are we going to do all of your episodes? So just like a whole, <laughs> we'll talk about all the things. Have, have your man call me and let's do it. I Dang. love talking about this stuff. There you go. Yeah, we, we will. Move. We'll definitely have you uh, back on. We also have a sister show called Anatomy of Sex, where we talk about, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. more, you know, yeah. sex, you know, sex and intimacy, yeah. connection, pleasure and so on. So, uh, yeah. OK, where, where can people go to uh, uh, find what you're doing uh, in the, if they want more of it? Yeah. Um, well, the website is, is easy, gsyoungblood.com. And there you can see the video courses. I, I have um, I have information on my coaching. I have information on my video courses. I, I just came out with an embodiment course that goes along with the book, the second book that I wrote, which is called The Art of Embodiment. You can find it on Amazon. Um, but the course is there and, and guys are really loving that because it goes, you know, that allows them to go deeper into their practice. This is for the guys that are really serious about mm -hmm. doing this. Um, you can find a great sampling of my work on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I put lots of stuff out there so you can kind of see who I am. Mm -hmm. And um, I have two projects going on that I'll mention. One is um, a derivation of this work for the corporate world that's more focused on an embodied executive presence. And mm -hmm. so you can go to embodiedexecutivepresence.com and see my corporate work, which mm -hmm. really marries my 20 years in, in the corporate world. You know, I've been there and, and I know what how this work can transport into there. We don't talk gender. We talk about directionality and responsiveness. You know, those are different energies. Mm -hmm. um, the second project that will be uh, I'll be releasing soon is is a, a workshop on dark sexual energy. Oh, cool. And I, I've had a lot of guys whose wives are saying, "I, I kind of need you to lead more in the bedroom. Like, bring mm -hmm. some more, oomph, some more mm -hmm. edge. This is boring." Mm -hmm. um, and the guys are like, uh, "How do I do that?" <laughs> yeah. So you know, I've done a fair amount of training in this area. Um, so I'm, I'm putting together a workshop. How do you cultivate these energies? Mm -hmm. and, and it's a, it's tricky territory because it's in an age of consent and the age of mm -hmm. me too. How do you marry these two things? You know, the age of consent and me too and dark sexual energy, like, Oh, that's a tricky one. And that's what we're trying to do. And yeah. um, so that's something that'll come out. So get on my mailing list at yeah. the, on my website and you get notified when, yeah. when I'm ready to Oh, awesome. open up and open. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking mm -hmm. forward to all that because this, I mean, just hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. of conversation and growth. So again, GS, thank you so much. You guys go check out this book. Like I said, we've been reading this in my uh, Badass Husband Men's Mastermind, and it's just like the, the topic of conversation every single week. Like yeah. a bunch of us picked it up. We're like going through it and going, holy shit, this is crazy. And we're seeing the transformation in the yeah. relationships too. Mm -hmm. And that's where awesome. that's where the rubber meets the road. So dude, thank you for your work so much. I uh, can't wait to talk to you again. You guys go check out this stuff. Trust me. You'll you'll thank yeah. you'll thank him for it and thank us for it later too. Yeah. And on my last plug is I'll say if for anybody has read it, hey, do an Amazon review, share it with a friend. All that stuff helps me, you know, be more of a teacher than a marketer, which I like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yes, language. I will make a note for my men's group to be like uh, jump on Amazon, mm -hmm. hype this thing up more, uh, yeah. and tell us what you got from it. So 
All right, man. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for listening to Anatomy of Us. This podcast is produced by my mom, Melanie Studley, and hosted by my dad, Seth Studley. Our show is edited and published by our producer, Reba Hansen, from Creative Media Support. Special thanks to our Patreon members that get an extra episode every week. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye. Bye.